We have with us um, Francis Golden. Now, when I first went to meet to see Mumia, my first visit, after we had talked for about four or five hours, because you can't go and come back. You have to just, once you're in, you have to stay. Mm -hmm. And which was good because we didn't have enough time, about five hours. We had hardly begun the conversation. There was so much to say. He said, what you have to do is to meet Francis mm -hmm. Golden. Mm -hmm. Well, that is what I did. And Golden, she she is named, and Golden, she is. Mumia's, Mumia's literary agent, and she is an agent mm -hmm. for Mumia. Amen. I have to tell you that right now, Francis. Mm -hmm. All right, Thank Francis. Mm -hmm. uh, the freest person that I know in this world is behind bars. Mm -hmm. And I kid you not, Mumia has not shut his mouth <laughs> since he was in prison. He got in when he was a baby and uh, he's 30 some odd years, 30 years on death row mm. and for the past few weeks he's been in general population. But they, they put him in prison not because he killed anybody, because he didn't. The man has never killed anybody. But because he exposed all the wrongdoing of the police in Philadelphia. <coughs> And he did it on the radio, and he did it in newspapers. And he was a brilliant journalist. He's an award-winning journalist. And he gave chapter and verse where you had to know that what he said was the truth. And the black people in Philly, whose children were the ones in prison, knew he was telling the truth. And when they found him on the scene of a crime where a cop had been killed, and Mumia was on the scene, having been shot in the chest, by the cop and was dying and bleeding on the sidewalk, they didn't give a shit who killed the cop. Mm. They got the man that was making their life a living hell. And they took him and they banged his head against a steel bar before throwing him into the paddy wagon. When he got to the prison, to the hospital, they threw him on the floor, they kicked him in the head with their boot, mm. and then the cops the police, the uh, doctors took over, and he was half dead. His sister came to the prison <coughs> and walked right past him because she didn't recognize him. Mm -hmm. He was so swollen and bleeding that she did not her know her brother. So he has spent his time in prison and as soon as he caught his breath and his wounds were healed, what did he do? He spoke out about what was wrong with the prison, about what was wrong with the prison system, about what was wrong with the president, and what is wrong with capitalism. And he hasn't stopped. <laughs> Twice a week, he does a commentary, which is on WBAI, and if you listen to it, you will listen to the clearest political analysis you have ever heard from any professor. The man reads five books a week. None of them are novels. <laughs> mm. he, he edu he's like a sponge. When, he get, when you have a big meeting and we get him for three minutes on the air and someone asks him a question, he doesn't answer the question. He gives you American history. He gives you chapter and verse. He is so intelligent. He is so knowledgeable. He's one of the most remarkable, he's the, clearly the most intellectual, brilliant strategist in the country today and still behind bars. So I'm not going to go into what's wrong with the prison system. Everybody you heard has told you the truth. We've got to end the prison industrial complex. We have to rely on our women because they are the ones that the, are the strongest fighters, because they're the ones who take chair, care of the children. They are the ones who gave birth to these people who are in prison. There's something about our women that is breathtaking. Mm -hmm. And so we have to make sure that whenever we have meetings and whenever we have speakers, women have to be part of it. That's right. Because they're more than half of this world and we are giving them short shrift. Mm -hmm. So what I will tell you is that we've had it. We've had it. Just like we want no more prisons, 
just like I want no more fucking capitalism, mm. we want to free Mumia. Because when we do that, we'll be opening up a whole new world of freedom in this country. So, on the 24th of April, we are going to occupy the Department of Justice. Yeah, yeah. Because at this point, it is the Department of Injustice. Mm -hmm. And we have to turn that around. We are going to have 30 prominent people like Danny Glover, Francis Fox Piz Piven, M1 of Def yep. Dead Prez. I have a new client named Norman Finkelstein. Mm -hmm. He has agreed to get arrested on that day. Mm -hmm. I am the first one who will raise my hand who say, I'm getting arrested to free Mumia. All right. And there's two things that all of us have to do to cut my time short, so we'll have some questions. The, the new breath of air that has come into this country is Occupy. Mm -hmm. Those of us who do not respond to the calls to join Occupy are selling ourselves short. We have to support Occupy in everything it does because it's changing this country. And we can't say they're great kids. We have to be them. We have to go to those demonstrations. We have to go to those marches. We have to join them because they are changing this country. And if we who are so political are not part of them, shame on us. Mm -hmm. So how many people in this room are going to get more involved in Occupy? Maybe I don't see right more names, more hands. Come on. Come on. Get more the hands. Up there. Promise yourself that you're going to get more involved in Occupy. The next thing you're going to do is join me on the 24th of April, which is very close. There are going to be buses, there are going to be cars, there are going to be trains. Get on those buses, cars, and trains and go to the Department of Justice. And when they said, Break it up, folks. You've had your fun. Move. You've got to say, I'm not moving. That's right. It's not so bad to get arrested. I've been arrested oh, nine fun. times. I'm yeah. struggling for an even dozen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the cops in New York know that there's a crazy nutcase with purple hair uh -huh. who uh -huh. has a bad heart, and uh -huh. whatever you do, don't arrest her. Uh -huh. So whenever I go to get arrested, they say, step back, lady, you might be hurt. Yeah. And I said, don't tell me what to do. You arrested him. I'm stemming forward. Arrest me. Mm -hmm. And they won't arrest me. But they don't know you. Yeah. So get arrested. Yeah. Yeah. Because if the worst you do is spend a few hours in jail, mm -hmm. we're going to have all the lawyers from the National Lawyers Guild there mm -hmm. free of charge to defend us. We, have, we expect to have 30 dignitaries arrested. We expect to have 500 individuals arrested. And if we do, we're going to change the situation for Mumia. Because it's going to be on every radio station. It's going to be on every television show. It's going to be in every newspaper that these 1,500 nutcases agree to get arrested for one man. If you, th you do not have this on your desk, please take it before you leave because it gives you the address and the place. And we are going to change the... The people don't know who Mumia Abu-Jamal is. You do know who he is. We have to tell the rest of the citizenry so that we can make a big splash. We did it on the 9th of December at the, the Constitution Hall in Washington, D.C. And overnight, millions of people knew that Mumia existed, that he's innocent, that he should be freed. I beg you to join us on the 24th Let's get arrested, let's <laughs> fill the jails, let's fill the newspapers, yeah. let's fill television, and let's free Mumia Abu-Jamal. Thank you. All right. And I undertake that there will be a free Mumia demonstration in front of the Amer uh, uh, American uh, Embassy in London, mm -hmm. right there with the rest All of All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Every year, my literary agency sends out a present to 500 people. I bought 500 paperback copies of the new Jim Crow mm -hmm. and sent it to all our friends in and out of the industry. But what's much. important for us yes. to know mm -hmm. is that if a black person is caught with one marijuana stick, mm -hmm. he can serve 10 years in jail. But friends that I know that use cocaine all the time, mm -hmm. even if they're caught, mm -hmm. 
get away free. Mm. I mean, the, the, the disparity between what happens with blacks and whites is astounding. I saw for 20 years t two, four guys on death row, and three of them were innocent. Three of these people on death row were innocent of the crime for which they were convicted. So the, not only that, but do you know that today, in this year, there are laws being passed that are going to prevent 10 million people from voting. That's Instead of increasing the vote, mm -hmm. and it's all being done by the Republicans. Yes. yes. And I, w I want to say that the Democrats aren't fighting it hard enough. Mm -hmm. So, you know, un until we join our struggle against the industrial complex, thank you, with getting rid of capitalism, we're not going to change the there's two things I'm going to do. I'm 88, mm. so I have to work really fast. Mm. <laughs> I want to see Mumia free. Is, she is working fast. Yeah. And, and I'm, going, I'm doing a book, mm. which is going to be published within a year, called What is the United States Like Under Socialism? Mm. And it's going to be written by the top left b minds in this country, Francis Fox Piven, everybody that's smart, is writing what's wrong with capitalism and what socialism would look like in our daily lives in this country. And when that book is published and Mumi is free, I'm ready to check out. Um, no, no. Uh, that's no. when you stop living. Absolutely. That, yeah, that's what I'm living now. You have some free time. Yes, that's it.